welcome to this video. Thank you very much for being here. Your time is very much appreciated. We are going to have a chin wag today about seasonal orchid care because Desiree Grace asked for a breakdown back many, many weeks ago. I apologize, Desiree Grace, for being so late in getting this video up. But when it comes to seasonal orchid care, it is never, ever too late. And I hope that this answers your question, your curiosity, or perhaps confirms something you already know. Keeping us company is Prostechia cochleata variety lancifolia, not just because I love being near her and I'm taking advantage of the incredible bloom spectacle and enjoying her fragrance while I'm at it, but because at the end of the video I will prove a point when it comes to the variables that the orchid hobby has and she is the perfect candidate. So in order to get into seasonal orchid care let's talk about this subject from a completely different perspective. I'm going to direct your mind to consider the perspective of the orchids that we are growing because more often than not when we talk about seasonal orchid care our mind automatically drifts to our four seasons winter, spring, summer, and fall. But when we think of what our orchids need in the seasons, then all our change in seasons goes right out the window. And I will hopefully be able to explain it successfully so that from here on in, we can get a better understanding of the needs and care every individual orchid in our collection requires. While we think that orchids pretty much are the same, they are not. We may think that the growing season is spring, summer because of temperatures rising, longer daylight, etc. But if you observe your orchids, you will notice that not all of them are doing the same thing. Not all are in active growth, not all are in bloom, not all are growing roots, some don't even have leaves on them. So we need to separate ourselves from the mindset of our four seasons when we think of seasonal orchid care. Now, let's pretend then that we are orchids and in order to put ourselves into the orchid's shoes or pots to get a clearer perspective, we are species orchids or primary hybrids and not humans. Now that we've established the fact that we are in the mind frame and mindset of being an orchid, we have three seasons which can be divided as follows. The first one being resting and dormancy. All species and primary hybrids go through this. Some of us may take months in this state of being and existence, and others of us have a quicker turnaround cycle. And some of us may be deciduous, and then there are those that hold on to their leaves. The second season is active growth. Whether we are growing roots in the pot or we are starting with new growths that can be seen happening above the surface of the media, something is changing and we are on the move. Whether we start showing buds or even the color of our leaves that were dull during our resting period, that starts to brighten up or one of our eyes swells and we are in active growth as in really getting a new growth started. Our third season is the blooming period. If it happens that you're not a seedling or a near blooming size orchid, those of us that are small and are not big enough to bloom yet, we have it in our DNA to get to that point. It's just that we are not there yet. For those of us that are mature out there, the blooming period is also a season. And during these seasons, we have different needs and care requirements. During resting and dormancy is when we sleep or we have just finished blooming and we are in a form of reset. Our hormones are remobilizing and it can take longer for some of us, whereas others have a quicker turnaround. This includes those of us that are seedlings or near blooming size or even those of us that are acclimating because we have changed location. After we have finished growing a new growth and our new roots, we don't need much in form of care. We don't need fertilizer, we don't need supplements, just the occasional watering, thank you very much, because that makes sure that we don't dehydrate. I mean, you know, consider yourself, or let's say, consider me. You wake me up at 4 a.m. and serve me a buffet, and I may actually go for it because do I have a choice if it's being forced down my throat? But I'm not going to like it. And then if somebody keeps doing it, it will eventually affect my health in a negative way. And the same is with orchids. They have done their thing and during the resting and dormancy period, they are now on a reset and just need the minimum amount of care being 
light, hydration, and fresh air. When it comes to our season of active growth, now, <laughs> the magic happens and we are waking up and it is grow time. Not all of us grow new growths at the same time as we do roots. So active growth is when we start to do something, even if it is below the surface of the pot. Some of us show signs of active growth when the color of our leaves change from dull green, which happens when we are in snooze mode. They then change to a brighter, more vibrant and healthier color green, and some of us actually start to show spikes emerging before even new growths or roots start. Then there are others of us that just start new root growth before we even get to grow a new growth. Some of us do everything at the same time, but either way, when we do wake up, we are expecting something to come our way to help encourage the growth, whichever it may be. So now is a good time to start with supplements. And when it comes to supplements, a really, really big help to us is to get some help with the growth hormones. They just give us that extra bit of energy boost that we are already in the process of activating within ourselves. Seaweed, once a month, is a super welcome supplement because that has growth hormones in it, which we also have, and it is like an energizer supplement. It also helps us on the root front. Give us that stuff, and chances are that our root production will be vigorous. Calcium right out of the gate when it comes to us waking up because our new growth spurt, whichever it is, spikes, roots, or new growth as such, that needs help and sustenance so that we can grow the structures and roots with sturdy cells, avoiding any attack from pests that think they can come and destroy our efforts while our growths are tender. Bring in some magnesium, seeing as we are growing, we are also starting to photosynthesize, and that magnesium stuff is awesome to get more of, so that we don't have to rely on the reserves we have in our other structures. Getting enough of that will help with the photosynthesis for everything we are growing now. And then, really bring on the fertilizer. We are going to need that on a regular basis. It will depend on how many growths we are growing, or if we are only growing roots, just give us fertilizer. Growing roots takes an enormous amount of energy, and we can use all the help we can get with that, seeing as many of us get repotted when we start growing roots. Or our root tips get broken and we have to have the energy to branch that root so that we can get everything into our structures at a maximum level. Damage done to any of our structures will be much, much lessened if we have enough energy by way of good fertilizer in us so that we can overcome that damage and then continue to grow a strong root system and a new growth and probably flower. During our active growing phase, we need the maximum light that we can tolerate without burning our existing leaves, please. We need a lot of flushing so that any of the fertilizer or supplements that we could not absorb do not linger in the pot and cause damage to the roots that we are growing and as much airflow as possible because of how much water and humidity is around us. Our new growths cannot be rotting out or else we have to start the whole process all over again which requires even more energy and it can take quite some time to build up that energy for us to start another growing point. It can take up to a year for that to happen. Bring on the fertilizer, give us the maximum that we can handle during the active growing season. Our bloom season is the third one that we deal with. Pretty much at this point in time, our job is done. We are hoping to get pollinated, create a seed pod, and guarantee the continuation of our kind. If that doesn't happen, then we go back to resting, and depending on the temperature we find ourselves in, we go dormant, lose leaves, or just do nothing, even if the human season is spring, summer, or fall. So these are the three seasons and they do not coincide with winter, spring, summer or fall. Now, let's go back to human mode and look at some examples and maybe you can go to your collection and see similarities of what I just talked about, which will break down your seasonal orchid care into something that is time-saving as well as you can stop guessing and hoping for the best. When you see your orchids growing new growth during the winter months for the orchid, it is active growth season and it has to be treated as such. Fertilize, supplement, flush, and repeat until the growth matures. Our human winter has nothing to do with the season of the orchid because you can see it is doing something. It is actively either growing roots or a new growth, or even it is forming a sheath. 
Now, if you are growing in a hemisphere where daylight hours are not 12 steady hours per day, then that is where supplementing with artificial lights comes in. Because the natural habitat of the orchids that are in active growth in our winters has those kinds of hours and your temperatures should then also be matching according to what the orchid requires. That is where heaters come in. And here's where I'm gonna put in a disclaimer. Not all of us can do that. And orchids are resilient when it comes to having adverse conditions during their active growth. That is when we have to be careful with the balance of how many hours of light are the orchids getting when in active growth, if the day length is reduced, and then the fertilizer application has to be minimal so that the growths grow strong, not to be confused with large because large could mean that the growths are bolting to reach the light because the amount of fertilizer they are getting does not have the amount of light to match that growth spurt. It is at this point then that we have to accept that any adverse conditions will result in smaller growth and possibly no blooms, but the growth will still be a source of energy and it will grow roots and long-term still provide for the health and development of the orchid. So why we want to see blooms on our orchids, and that is the point, why we grow the orchids that we do, sometimes we have to forfeit them for the health and benefit to the orchid itself. If we cannot provide optimal conditions in our hemisphere during the active growing season of the orchid, not our yearly seasonal changes. The reason I'm breaking it down like this is because I'm hoping that it'll help you understand how you can grow a collection of orchids that are conducive to what you can provide within your environment. Meanwhile, let me know if you have any questions about this tangent I was just on. Let me know in the comments and we can be more specific. I just had to mention that because if you see videos of mine during winter spring of 21 22 then you may think huh but she's not supplementing with lights and heaters there is a reason for that but i don't want to appear as though i am contradicting myself if you don't know my indoor setup and then stumble across those videos okay so back to the different stages of orchid seasons within our collections meanwhile Several of our orchids are in their active growing season during our human winter. Other orchids are dormant or resting and they will not require any fertilizer or supplements. When you watch your collection doing different things during our four seasons of the year, you will recognize that some are just not growing new growths while others are blooming in January or February. Breaking it down into the three seasons that orchids have is a direct guideline of your care for any specific orchid within your collection. This allows us to grow many different orchids and still target a personalized approach to their care. So off the top of my head and using what I have in my collections, I have some examples here. So Dendrobium of Philum, Catacetinae and Lelia perinei, a classic example of a Lelia doing nothing for 80% of the year. But anyway, a Philum drops its leaves, as do Catacetinae, so that makes it easy to recognize their dormant or resting season. My Van der Falcata goes a dull green, signaling its dormant or resting season. My Lelia perinei holds onto the leaves, is not a deciduous orchid, but does absolutely nothing visible to the eye and is resting for the majority of its existence. All of them behave differently as they break dormancy. The aphyllum will start producing nubbins which will turn into blooms. The catacetinae will start a new growth at the base of a bulb and the perinei eventually gets its act together in January, February, but it is growing new roots at the base of the new growth that matured and bloomed in August of the previous year. And it won't start growing a new growth until June of the year when it starts growing roots in January. So you see how extended active grow season can be for an orchid, even though it is not growing a new growth per se. That has to be taken into consideration. Root growth needs to be supported by supplements and fertilizer. In all of these cases though, even though they are so different in the manner and form of how they break dormancy, watering and supplementation increases the moment there are these signs happening on different orchids, with the exception of course, catacetinae, if they have just been recently repotted. Another small tangent, 
it's necessary for my channel. Catacetinate care in Lekka and self-watering differs as well and I have a playlist for them in case you're interested to understand why I do water my catacetinate during their dormancy. Anyway, you see how fabulous this question from Desiree Grace is. It has so many variables and those variables is what makes growing orchids so incredibly interesting, not just in one's own collection, but when we see the same orchid doing something completely different in another environment. But to be able to narrow down personal care to an easy ABC understandable formula, orchids have three seasons and that is how we have to approach their care, not based on our four seasons. Remember that most of the orchids we grow in our collections privately are from tropical climates where it is warm, humid and with very slight temperature differentials, unless of course we are specializing in cold growers or a specific genus that requires rainforest style conditions, but those also fall under the seasons I just mentioned. They may require specific dialed in conditions that probably 80% of the orchid growers do not have in place, but even those orchids have their three seasons just like all the rest. When it comes to orchids that are complex hybrids, not just fowls, I'm referring to orchids that are bred for vigor and regular blooming, the three seasons also apply. The only difference in those cases is their dormant and resting season has been bred out of them, resulting in a quicker turnaround cycle from when the blooming is done to when new growth start. That turnaround will pretty much happen instantly. And here we come full circle back to Prostechia cochleata variety lancifolia and a little food for thought. Prostechias and encyclias are used in a lot of hybrid because talk about the variables. This Prostechia cochleata is a perfect example because it is in full bloom and look at this orchid go. So it's in its blooming season, but already in full active growth season, not just with new growth, but with root growth at the same time. This is all happening while the orchid is still in bloom season. So we now have a combination of seasons in one orchid. Clearly our focus is active growth. Remember before I said when the orchid blooms, it has pretty much done its thing and that's it. If it doesn't produce a seed pod, it's going into resting mode. Clearly this orchid has a quick turnaround cycle and is already an active growth season. So fertilizer, watering, flushing, supplementing, it is a continuum even though the flowering will fade she is now growing the growth for the next go around when it comes to bloom season again. As a candidate for hybridization, they are fragrant, they have an abundant bloom count as you can see, and they are vigorous to the nth degree. And this is a species. Again, here we are with variables. Go figure. Just when you think that you can nail down a formula, along comes an orchid that goes, really? <laughs> Watch me, hold my beer. I'm doing it all at the same time. And I can say, yep, really, because while this orchid is doing all of this at the same time, her resting period will come where she will sit and do nothing until she starts to grow sheaths and spikes ready to show off like this again in the next bloom season. But cross her with an orchid that is abundant and blooms during a time of year when the prostechia is resting. You may just have yourself a super vigorous and floriferous hybrid where the resting period is so minimal it can be considered non-existent. And that is where you will be watering, fertilizing, supplementing, flushing all year round. And for that reason, at the beginning, I said, let's consider ourselves species or primary hybrid orchids so that we can really pull apart the three seasons that an orchid has and then really narrow in the care for those three seasons. Get yourself a hybrid that has been bred to eliminate any resting period and becomes a frequent bloomer. You just keep watering, fertilizing because that orchid is always busy, 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 just like the prostechia is in our example right now. I really do hope that I wasn't talking in circles. And if you got that impression, I apologize. If I can, without going into such lengthy details and explanations, which in the orchid hobby is necessary so as not to confuse people, orchids have three seasons and their care applies according to their three seasons. Dormant, resting, active growth, including what we cannot see on the surface of the pot and blooming. That's it. 
Around those three seasons, you can tailor your care specifically with each and every single orchid you have in your collection. Knowing that it may be dull, horrible, and cold outside, but your orchid inside is in active growth. Keep fertilizing. If your light levels are on point, it makes absolutely no difference to the orchid what is happening outside. It's what is the orchid doing that is relevant and we need to respond accordingly. I absolutely love the subject of seasonal orchid care because of the variables. But I also love the fact that it can be broken down into three simple seasons because then a massive orchid collection doesn't become overwhelming with who needs what when. Pretty much that answers the question. Who needs what when? Dormant resting, active growth, blooming, period. <laughs> Desiree, I hope that this was helpful, if rather long, but when I get some super interesting questions, well, here we are. <laughs> and if you are still here and watch the video to the end, let me say thank you so very, very much for watching. I did preempt at the beginning that I appreciate your time. Now I'm going to really thank you for your time for sticking through to the end. And I can wish you a fabulous day. However, I'm putting a condition on that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.